Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Ministry of Education trains a new cohort of security personnel. The Chief Medical Officer addresses concerns over St. Lucia's vulnerability to the Ebola outbreak. Organizers of St. Lucia Carnival to consider regulations and licensing. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyo. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development has commenced another in its school security course. The program, facilitated by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, provides training to security guards at the various schools. Here's Janelle Norvell. The second cohort of security personnel has commenced training under the Ministry of Education Security Corps. Following a number of break-ins at various schools on the island, Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gil Rigabert, indicated that the safety and security of the individuals on school premises are of utmost importance. The minister explained that the necessary steps would be taken in that regard, including the training of individuals to serve as security officers at the various schools on island. Highlighting the seriousness of the tasks given to the security personnel, the minister shared with them words of encouragement. And that is why I want to encourage you to embrace this training opportunity, to come in with fresh and open minds, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force Training School has distinguished itself in this field, having trained generations of police officers in our country. You are receiving the best there is to offer on this island. So I want you to be open-minded. And I want you to embrace the transformation that I'm guaranteed will happen over the next couple of weeks. Commandant in charge of the Police Training Academy of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Inspector Le Centre Desi Dolor, indicated that the selected individuals were considered most deserving to participate in the course. Superintendent in charge of training, Dr. Mashama Sili, commending the Ministry for undertaking the training, emphasized its importance to the safety of school personnel. It was seen that it is important for you to receive that training because you not only secure a building or the items in the building, you're also responsible for the lives of children and adults during school hours. So it is very commendable that your employer has seen it fit to equip you with the right tools, commencing with the fundamentals and that is the basic security course. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Kendall Kodra, expressed gratitude to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force for its assistance in the training of 30 security personnel in this cohort. The training is at a level of Special Police Constable, SPC. Deputy Commissioner of Police, Milton Daisy, explained to the trainees the expectation of an SPC. Now, it is expected, and the minister said it, that some of you may be special constables, okay, if the training goes well with you, special constables. Now, with special constables, I know, and I'm speaking on behalf of the com myself and the commissioner, that we would not make persons special constables, even if they are not within the force where you are carrying an oath of office, which is the same oath as special or the special constables. So here discipline comes into play. Okay, we would not like to know that persons are made special constables and then they form the full out there. Okay, if you are given that opportunity, you are given the oath that you behave as a special constable. So therefore you would need to have your behavior, your attitude as to be changed or kept in line with what is expected of you. The Ministry of Education Security course commenced on Monday, 22nd July and will be held over the period of two weeks. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has addressed public concern regarding St. Lucia's vulnerability to the ongoing Ebola virus disease outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo. 
on July 17, 2019. The World Health Organization declared the outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. This means that the situation constitutes a public health risk to other states through the international spread of disease and that a coordinated international response is required to control for the spread of the disease. St. Lucia's Chief Medical Officer Dr. Merlin Fredericks James says while there is the global alert, Ebola is not endemic to St. Lucia and has not been confirmed in any Caribbean territory. In the Caribbean and in St. Lucia, our risk of getting a case of Ebola is extremely low. It is extremely low, but we do know that due to travel, the possibility exists regardless of how low it may be. Um, though the outbreak continues in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the World Health Organization has indicated that at this point in time, it is not necessary for countries that are far away, such as countries in the Caribbean, to implement excessive screening measures at their ports. Um, persons may recall that during the last Ebola scare, we had in Selesha at some point in time implemented some screening measures at our ports, but that is not indicated at this point in time. So the World Health Organization has advised that there should be no hindrance to trade or travel. Though the risk of introduction to our island is very low, the Department of Health and Wellness has commenced sensitization and reactivation of its staff and stakeholders on the National Ebola Plan and Protocols. The recently strengthened Public Health Act empowers the ministry to take the necessary quarantine, isolation and treatment measures should any potential Ebola case be identified on our shores. We have raised the alert, we have informed our stakeholders and we have meetings planned to inform persons at the national level as well. We have a National Health Security Committee which should be meeting very soon to discuss the threat. We have also reactivated our Ebola preparedness plans and will continue sensitizing persons and will also continue monitoring the situation. The Ministry of Health has direct communication with the Pan American Health Organization and the Caribbean Public Health Agency. And we also receive direct information from the World Health Organization through its IHR or International Health Regulations um, Committee as well as the alert system. So we are continuing to monitor the situation and we will keep persons updated. And that was the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Merlin Fredericks James. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney has identified education as one of the pillars of transforming the economic landscape of St. Lucia. In that vein, Honorable Shastney believes that the educational revolution is based on the incorporation of new technologies in the education system as well as teacher training. And as chairman of the Caribbean community CARICOM, Prime Minister Shastney is championing that change regionally. In fact, a partnership between the CARICOM Secretariat and UNESCO is working towards implementing quality standards for the education sector. Jacine Dunkley Malcolm of CARICOM News Time reports. Standards for the teaching profession are currently being reviewed by experts across the world. The review is being conducted via a series of consultation workshops being done in five UNESCO regions. Experts from the Caribbean and Latin America have started reviewing the standards for this region. The consultation began on Wednesday, July 17 at the Arthur Chung Convention Center in Georgetown, Guyana through a partnership with the CARICOM Secretariat, UNESCO and other stakeholders. The first phase took place in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia and uh, the second phase is taking place in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. So it was a fantastic opportunity for CARICOM to collaborate with UNESCO to engage in its own consultations around the proposed CARICOM regional standards for the teaching profession and actually look more closely at the ways in which those proposed standards are aligned to the UNESCO Global Framework or the proposed UNESCO Global Framework for the standards. So that's what's happening here today. Uh, it, we have actually included a number of participants within Guyana and across the world. So we have representation from South Africa, we have representation from Europe, Latin America, within the Caribbean itself, 
and in particular a very strong cohort of Guyanese participation stakeholders who are involved in the consultations here today, including, and I think one of the things that we need to celebrate, is the participation of our teacher training candidates because these standards, once they are confirmed and endorsed by the COSOR for implementation, are going to affect their future and the nature of the professional the profession and the kind of professional that they turn out to be. The purpose of these regional consultations is to make sure that these standards are developed not by us sitting in an office uh, at UNESCO but by the profession themselves. An international task force on Teachers for Education 2030 has also been established to support governments and teacher organizations to agree on and implement a common understanding of teaching and teacher quality. The task force is a group of stakeholders interested in the uh, quality of education and particularly in the progress of the teaching profession. It was established back in 2008 in, in Oslo, in Norway, with support from some countries, particularly Norway, but with constituents from governments, civil society, teacher unions, like Education International is part of it, uh, and also experts. So uh, the purpose of the task force is basically advancing in uh, teacher professionalization, teacher professional development, but also looking into the, the, the working conditions of teachers that will allow this professionalization and these attempts to improve the quality of teachers worldwide. Meantime, the St. Lucia National Commission for UNESCO has launched the St. Lucia Sandwatch Project funded under the UNESCO Participation Program for the Biennium 2018-2019, the UNESCO Sandwatch Project seeks to reduce the levels of pollution in the Caribbean Sea. It will provide water testing kits and training manuals to all schools in St. Lucia. Secretary General for the National Commission for UNESCO in St. Lucia, Masia Symphorium, hopes the initiative will be fully integrated within the school curriculum. We have all seen firsthand the devastating effects of climate change and global warming on small island developing states such as St. Lucia. In order to respond effectively and to mitigate the impact of these events, we have to respond through education. Education is a key and in that regard we believe that the Sandwatch project is a perfect tool for achieving our objectives. Acting Director of Innovation within the Department of Education, Lenel Malzer, says ultimately the project will help to identify and evaluate threats facing the coastal environments and develop sustainable approaches to addressing those threats. Those of you who are part of Generation X, you would have grown up in a time when the coastal region in St. Lucia brought about much economic stimuli. Hotels were being built, sand was being mined, mongrel was being cut to make charcoal. So it brings chills up my spine that I stand here today to welcome you, to wish you well on such an occasion where we are going to be embarking collectively on an effort to study our coastal region, to give insight and to effect change. On behalf of the department which I serve, we are hopeful that this training exercise for students and the teachers as well as stakeholders will facilitate something ingenious in schools. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The damage that no. they do. Think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. 
excessive agrochemical use, additives and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome everyone to another update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. We continue to look at the Winnet Island Schools Games scheduled for Dominica. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports held a news conference Tuesday morning to announce St. Lucia's contingent to participate in the Games scheduled to open at the weekend in Dominica. Deputy Permanent Secretary Liotta Charlemagne Mason urged the athletes to give up their best and make the country proud. Your determination and hard work has paid off and have given you a sport to represent Team St. Lucia. You will be going out there as ambassadors to St. Lucia and most importantly to yourselves. So I don't think I need to express or to, to tell you how you need to behave but to let you know that we expect you to compete in the true spirit of sportsmanship. Isabel Alexander Markey is a school sports coordinator. She will be attending the games as chaperone to the female contingent. She called on the selected athletes to ensure St. Lucia performs well enough to win the title after being joint runners-up last year in St. Lucia. This year the games will be held in Dominica and we go in there with one purpose in mind to do our utmost best our utmost best and not to repeat a, a, a second or joint anything we go and we know we have been training hard so what we can do is replicate what we, what we put into practice on the field of play when we reach in Dominica you know it is tough we have three islands against one is four islands fighting to be the to attain that one dream and to be Winwood Islands champion and so this year let it be us. Wayne Benty has been appointed overall team manager. He stressed that he wanted to see the same enthusiasm shown in the camp to be reflected in their play while in Dominica for the games. In Viewfort we were dealing with five things we have to work on. Our discipline, we know that what that is. Respect, and you must be able to respect yourself so that you could respect others. You must be responsible. You must show some empathy. Mm -hmm. And you must be safe. So safety for yourself, safety in the environment when we get to Dominica, safety in your room, and just general safety for yourself. So with these five things, other things we'll be traveling with. We should attend to and like Mrs. Mackey said, we have to understand each other and work with each other throughout the 10 days we'll be in Dominica. Grenada are defending their Winnet Island Schools Games title. That's all from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The review of St. Lucia's Carnival 2019 began Tuesday and is expected to continue over the next week. A main agenda item is the proposal for the introduction of regulation and licensing for Carnival. More from Anissi Antoine. The post-mortem for Carnival 2019 is scheduled to begin this week as the government of St. Lucia places focus on the development of regulations and licensing for Carnival 2020. The two-day street parade welcomed a number of new bands, including Zuvo, which was the biggest band. Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, with responsibility for culture and creative industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, highlighted the importance of setting regulations due to the increased in visitors coming to experience St. Lucia Carnival. The numbers from these bands were very, very significant. Uh, it says a lot to us that people are listening to us from the outside, they're responding to us, and I think the investment the government has made in terms of trying to transform this product 
um, and, and making it something that all of us can be proud of, I think we're well on course in terms of doing that. Clearly, we have to be able to establish now the regulations and the standards um, for operating the events. And we are busy, of course, trying to do this. The minister stated that the Carnival Zone has been expanded and highlighted the impact of the increase in private events. Yes, you do have some of these events. Um, because some of the events are advertised online, you have high levels of patrons and persons coming in. And to some extent, sometimes the organizers do not manage that properly and they're not prepared, you understand, for the level of support that they will be getting in terms of patronage um, to the events. So we have a responsibility um, as a government to ensure that these events are licensed um, and people obtain the necessary clearances, you know, before they can say that they're actually doing these events. So all of that is food for thought, discussion um, during the, during the post-mortem. Um, and I think the fact that people have been through it, they've been through the experiences, we've been doing this for years, but we need some controls. You know, we need to ensure that we conform to the standards. And that's where we are headed now. That the minister encouraged the organizers and executive members of bands to educate their members on the regulations and rules as it relates to carnival. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Promise Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyo. Climat la terre can change. Exa can affect nous tous. Cyclone can be plus mauvais. Gros l'eau et la panne de l'eau can détruire les animaux et les plants. Quand la mer can be plus chaud, il can tuer les places qui se pressent dans la gravité. La mer chaude can aussi changer de manière de se pressent, can quitter de l'autre côté et aller à l'autre côté. Cette liste can contribuer à un petit gaz en l'espace. Quand un petit pays, nous can essayer de faire tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre de venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il y a chaque année, depuis que nous tout au le monde la terre, Kabouli, gaz, l'huile et chébon. Et ça, quand on est cause la terre, il y a chaque plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire actuellement même, c'est pour adapter. Nous faisons tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protecter tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumée qui est naturelle. Batik Kainou pour amater de mange en temps de cyclone et de l'eau. Construire canal pour l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui le canal n'a pas les ordres. Nous faisons tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps de changement de climat. Ça. Trouver plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même sa point pour protéger le corps et tout l'autre cette lycée. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Kinewes Consabilité pour Information en Gouvernement, c'est le CGIS. A ce moment, Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, Capositeau Nouvelle en Creole, Présenteau Primus Hutchinson. Célébration Carnaval, ce n'est pas une célébration seulement pour cette lycée qui a resté l'autre pays, mais aussi qui a entouché et opéré quand on lac pour les étrangers visiter le pays pour engager et bien participer à la célébration, à la célébration nationale. Nous. Pour la deuxième fois, l'avion Caribbean Airlines devait choisir un avion officiel pour le carnaval à cette ci C'est l'avion qui facilite pour les voisinages à la région Caribla visiter cette ci pour l'occasion de la célébration et que ça fait un agrément spécial. Pour ces autres carnavals, en l'eau, c'est vos jeunes français de visiter. Vous pouvez aussi expérimenter Festé Mercury Beach, un spectacle qui est très populaire sur la place française. Le spectacle là, c'est le 20 janvier. Le camarade Hod Guadeloupe déclare que Magwe Guadeloupe, c'est un joli pays. C'est le qui qui apporte encore plus d'amusement. Guadeloupe, oui, il est content de carnaval et en même manière, il est tellement excité et dansé et puis il y en a l'autre. Et dit, il y a un message ici. Il y a l'autre étranger déclaré qui, en opinion, le carnaval 2019, c'était plus mais il y a un même expérience là, et sans pièce de doute, il y a un retourné à cette ici l'année prochaine. Il y a l'autre avoué qui, c'est la première année, et vraiment tenu un bon temps, et il y a un retourné l'année prochaine aussi. Pour la célébration du carnaval l'année 2019, il y a tenu un grand quantité de spectacles, en parmi eux, c'était. Power, a groovy monarch, competition Calypso Intercommercial, a competition Steelband Panorama. 
Dans le salon, plusieurs étrangers participent à ces compétitions, avec ce spectacle carnaval. Il y en a eu parlé de l'expérience et puis c'est le sien Trinidad. Et ça, il y a eu un peu de l'expérience de carnaval. Il n'y a pas de la pièce de la façon. Le premier ministre, c'est le sien, on a eu Alain Chasné déclaré que la manière de célébration du carnaval a augmenté. C'est une manifestation de l'épouvement de la participation considérablement qui a dit les étrangers sont au Liban, la terre. Organisation de santé mondiale qui a traité la maladie Ebola, qui a affecté un grand pays en Afrique, ça c'est la démocratique république du Congo, qui a brisé le traitement si but de santé publique, qui a porté sa tasse internationale. Ça veut dire, une capacité qui est capable pour la santé publique pour l'autre pays, la terre, et par conséquence, ni besoin de trouver un traitement international qui est bien sérieux pour bloquer l'habilité pour se manger. Selon le chef officier médecin, c'est le docteur Molin Frederick James, il déclare que malgré Ebola, ce n'est pas une maladie qui a trouvé en cette ci et bien en Caraïbes-là, et que oui, cela est très bas, quand même, il est aussi possible pour payer à trouver ah bien, pour y trouver un pays nous-mêmes, ah bien, quand il y a parce que les gens qui ont voyagé tous les jours, en résultat de ça, il y a des gens qui ont été en République du Congo, qui ont été en contact et puis il y a d'autres gens, et bien, il y a des animaux. Selon le Dr. Frédéric, pour résoudre cela, le ministère a ressuscité toutes ces opérations, des actions, ces buts, pour si un cas malade de ça, trouver un cet Et c'est pour ça, le ministère a déjà. Um, vie levé tous ces plans nous tenir avant parce que chaque um, monde a changé la um, dernière fois peut-être um, à la prochaine sec qui est passé le, tout le monde a parlé de Ebola la tenir Ebola en différents um, pays la tenir monde qui a voyagé um, l'Amérique etc et qui a mené Ebola là so, depuis c'est juste c'est l'année ça nous avons déjà fait plein tous différents secteurs ça y a fait si un cas venu pour empêcher cas pour garder etc. Donc so, nous avons vu lever ces ces plans ça et nous avons vu parler avec, avec tout um, tout le monde pour y savoir qui ça nous a fait et ben ça nous n'est pour faire pour empêcher maladie ça venir à um, cette ici. Organisation de santé mondiale ça c'est WTO qui a conseillé les pays qui concernés pour pouvoir placer des restrictions à ces pays qui sont affectés pour de bout, euh, faire business et bio, et bien empêcher les gens d'entrer à ces pays. Ils ont dit que ça n'est pas nécessaire pour les présents. Il y a un projet de réhabilitation et de construction de canal en commune rivière mitan pour abattre le problème de l'eau du un fort appelé Jabout. Ce comité de développement a commencé à la, qui était ménagé pour GIA et puis assistance département de construction au ministère des Travaux. Pour GIA, où est établissement 187 mètres canal qui a, avec, qui a branché tous ces chemins en commune. Selon assistant ingénieur Len Léon, le projet qu'on a fait, c'est justement la PACANI à ses consultations et puis département, mais il y a il y a joué un rôle qui est très important parce que le département de la a aidé pour guider à qui meilleure façon pour conduire la qualité de travail comme ça. Léon déclaré qu'il y a très plein que tout le travail là, ce projet, le comité de développement en rivière Mitan, tient au courant et puis pour qui est fait. Il a fait. Il ajoute que ça a fait possible pour les officiers du département conseiller le comité, il était nécessaire, alors il était très facile. Pour les officiers étaient acceptés des gros travaux qui fait du projet ça là. En hauteur de 200 000 dollars, l'agent CTP a trouvé dépassé le projet à bas un lot fond des pays Canada pour ménagement ouest côte des As. Ça a été en réalité par programme régional de développement en Caribla qui a gouverné au pays Canada. Il y en a ces gros grecs là, ça c'est directeur Benoît Pierre Larmi déclaré que Projet a montré un bon exemple de manière que les communes ont adressé le changement de climat. Il noté que le Canada a assisté plusieurs pays à rejoindre pour bâtir la résilience contre le changement de climat et le comité de développement en rivière Mita. C'est un gros exemple.
représentatif du Parlement pour la commune, on est à Blenard Montout, déclaré que le projet de Rivière Mita a fait chemin pour établir plus de plans pour l'autre projet de réhabilitation. Il a ajouté que la commune et que l'autre commune a été là, qui a servi comme exemple pour bâtir le projet qui a embrassé à même façon pour abattre le changement de climat, pour placer le chemin et le canal de l'opposition. C'est top plus fort. Et c'est comme ça nous avons une bonne nouvelle là, mais c'est madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas considérer que vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour une nouvelle accueillante. À présent, je vous remercie pour votre vie. Merci. Merci à Bill Primus. Et ici, nous allons voir ce qui se passe à nous. Fait ou occasionnellement cloudy, hazy et brisé avec des chaleurs de scattered showers. Lingering moisture in the wake of a westward moving tropical wave will continue to cause some cloudy spells and some showers over the Eastern Caribbean today. Another tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward at about 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to affect the Eastern Caribbean region by tomorrow. A third tropical wave located over the Eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward at about 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 1.15 p.m. and will be high again at 8.22 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was low at 3.17 p.m. and will be high again at 9.29 p.m. Seas moderate to locally rough with waves 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.46 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.